Hi there Dr Rajiv I am here bringing you more secrets on how you can be successful as an international medical graduate doctor in Canada here I am going to tell you the ultimate study strategy to get more than 226 on MCCQE1 and let's do this together once you decide to write MCCQE1 it's usual you go look into blogs you search for videos you see someone reading a question bank so finally you end up so confused that you have no idea what to do i am going to say study smart and focus on high yield topics using the appropriate test materials so you get an excellent score on the mccqe1 remember as an img it's not enough if you just pass the mccqe1 you need to have high scores sure i said 226 plus which is the passing score but your goal should be to get more than 260 and preferably more than 280 on the mccqe1 because this increases your chances of matching i have seen many imgs read only textbooks this is not a very smart strategy on the other hand i have also seen imgs who spend the whole day reading this might work for only few of them but for the most part you are going to have a burnout you will get frustrated so i am going to tell you there are only three study materials which is a must one is toronto notes the second one is your simile world and the third one is first aid your study strategy should focus on using these three things in a very smart way and then looking in textbooks for those concepts for which you are not clear this is not a sponsored video but i'm going to tell you there are so many other materials like sketchy pathoma golgen videos if you end up choosing any of the other material it's still okay but you have to have a plan where you really focus on high yield topics in a smart way now i'm going to tell you in a simple way how to do that now first have a timeline on an average i would say imgs need at least 3 months and some imgs probably need 6 to 12 months to properly prepare for the mccqe1 now how much time you need would depend on what your baseline knowledge is obviously the more it is the less time you need if you speak to any of the canadian medical graduates they may say i only studied for a few weeks maybe a month or two but your case scenario as an img is different from them because for a canadian medical graduate they are already used to all the concepts and when they are going through medical training they are also hear all these questions again and again so they don't need to put a lot of effort on top of that it's enough if they just pass the mccq you want but for you as an img that will not be sufficient sure some program might tell you we don't look at mccq you want scores but for the most part i would say they probably will look at it because they have no other way of gauging how excellent you are and There is also a correlation that if your MCCQ1 scores are really good it means you are an outstanding candidate your medical knowledge is solid and you are more likely to be successful during your residency is this all making sense so once you decide on your timeline this is how i would approach this you can have this into three different phases the first phase is where you are trying to get to know all the subjects so i would say start with toronto notes and read from beginning to the end as much as possible i would say you try to grasp almost that's everything on toronto notes now as you're doing through this let's say you take the example of cardiovascular system simultaneously you read your simile world questions you could do this in the tutor mode and then you could focus just on cardiology and then as you're doing that you simultaneously do first aid so this is called an organ based system approach of studying with this your knowledge gets solidified in one organ system now as you are doing this make sure you make some notes and then subsequently once you finish your cardiovascular system then you can move on to respiratory system and so on and so forth as you are going through this If you come across any difficult concepts this is where you open textbooks for example if you're stuck with a pulmonary function test i suggest you open a medicine book you don't need to necessarily buy them 
but you can go to the library and make use of the resources you have in order to clarify these concepts. As you're going through this, make a list of all the topics that you find difficult to remember. So you memorize these in the final days of the exam. The next phase I would call is the revision phase. In this phase, you start your preparation with the USMLE world. Here, you can do one block at a time using time mode or tutor mode, whichever is comfortable. I personally would prefer a time mode. In this case, you run through a block and then make sure you dedicate a few hours, usually like two to three hours after finishing the block, so you can go revise all this. As you're doing this, look at your first aid notes. And look at your Toronto notes and solidify those concepts. Is this making sense? If you need my personal help to come up with a specific strategy for you, you can always check my website www.imgsecrets.com and you will find all the information there. As you're going through this revision phase, which depending upon your time may take about one to two months or even longer, your time to preparation and remember concepts becomes less and less and less. So once you're comfortable with this phase, then you move on to the final phase, which is, is the exam phase. Remember, most people don't even feel they are in the ace the exam phase because they are so stuck with the revision, they feel like they are always underprepared. Now come out of this because there is no perfect preparation. You have to be at a reasonably comfort level and confidence level but you can't expect to know 100% of the things. You have to take the exam, you have to take the leave and do it really well. During this final is the exam phase, skim through your USMLE world as your primary study material along with your Toronto notes for those concepts in which you have trouble with, plus your first aid. In this stage, you typically would not need a textbook because you would have already clarified all your concepts. Is this making sense? How important all this is? So you get a fantastic score on your MCCQ one A really important thing during the ACD exam phase is self-care. You have to focus on yourself. You should eat healthy food. Try to get out, get some walk, or do something outside with fresh air. All this will help you remember concepts even further. I recommend you do is take one of the MCCQ1 preparatory exam. These are very expensive exam, but ultimately, if you want to get the real exam experience, you could at least choose the option that is less expensive. At the end of the day, it might be beneficial for you to just take the test exam and see how it feels. This will boost your confidence. And if you're confident enough you're going to do well, you can save the money and not waste on it because these are expensive. Now, when you come to the last week of the exam, try to hit those topics which you really struggle with. Don't try to read everything because it's practically may not be possible to do that. And the day before the exam, take it easy as much as possible because the next day you have a really long day. So get some good rest, stay focused, stay confident. If you think about this, the day before the exam, there's really nothing much you can do because everything that you do on the exam would come from the concepts you have learned over the past few weeks to months or during your medical college training. So the last day is not a big deal. So take it easy on your last day. With all this, your MCCQ1 score rises exponentially. I say this based on the successful IEMGs I've seen who have taken the exam. This is my personal opinion. If you have any other thoughts on what might be an important point to get a really high score on MCCQ1, don't forget to leave in the comments below. If you did find any value with the video, make sure to hit the like button. Now that you know how to get a fantastic score on MCCQ1, in spite of all this, if you still end up failing the exam, don't worry about it. Check this video where I've suggested tips on how you can still be successful after having multiple MCCQ1 attempts. Take care, stay safe, I will talk to you soon. Don't read huge textbooks. Isn't that... This is not what you expected, did you?